God damn it war gaming. You fracked it up. Again. Can you please do something right for once? Wouldn't that be nice for a change? Well, I guess not. Not this time at least. It seems you don't want to give us nice things, only broken ones. Broken promises, broken events and broken souls. Our lovely viewers might be wondering what we have on the screen by now. Well, let me explain. It's a bit of a mess, but... This screen perfectly clarifies the main subject of this video. The trading caravan event for World of Tanks, more precisely and somehow, unfortunately. Honestly, we didn't expect to do another honest review for this wonderful game so soon, just after the Holiday Ops 2022 event. But I guess Wargaming likes to keep us busy creating new majestic content for our followers to watch. Which doesn't bother us at all, really. In fact, we were waiting for this occasion to happen. We are always on the lookout for new content released by Wargaming, so I guess we can only thank them in return for giving us a reason to wake up early in the morning and fire up our editing rigs. That being said, we'd like to welcome you, our ever lovely subscribers, to our honest review of the Trading Caravan event recently released by Wargaming. An event that was available for 5 days and took place from February 15th through February 20th. An event in which players were invited to throw silver, gold, bonds and potentially their soul out the window. Somewhat typical for wargaming, isn't it? We are already used with such nice and broken things from them, so nothing special here. Let us not linger more on the introductions and cut right to the subject. As usual. The Trading Caravan was a special event where players had the opportunity to buy various in-game goods using silver, gold or bonds. Items like premium tanks, 2D and 3D styles, improved equipment, premium days, and other goodies. Among the offers was also a new and exclusive tier 8 premium tank, the Soviet Kirovets 1 heavy tank with a brand new 2D style. The black marble style. You also had the opportunity to get your hands on the T-22 medium, a tier 10 reward vehicle, type 59, SU-130 PM, Cromwell B and tons of other tanks. Including the Astron Rex, which was previously only available for those who got it from the return of the Waffentrager event. These all sound nice and dandy, isn't it? Well, at least at first glance. Until you realize this is a wargaming event we're talking about. There must be a catch to it, surely. And yes? Yes, there is a catch. But we'll talk about that a bit later on. For now, we would like to start our honest review by analyzing how wargaming fracked up this event from the very beginning, maybe before it was even released. You see, for the first two or three days, the trading caravan event wasn't even working properly for a lot of players. In fact, for the first day and a good part of the second day, it didn't work at all. Players encountered multiple technical issues with the event page, some more serious than others. To make matters worse, Wargaming decided to keep the event up and running while trying to fix it, something that led to several more technical problems which didn't make the situation any better, as I think you realize. This approach by Wargaming, trying to fix something that is put into production, so to speak, made the first days of the event a wonderful mess for lots of players. Maybe even for them, as a company. It probably wouldn't have bothered us that much that the caravan was broken and unusable. Crap happens and we are well aware of that. They fix it and everything is nice and dandy after that. But what did bother us and also many other players was their inability to communicate to the community the technical problems they are facing with the event and guide players on how to proceed while they try to fix it. On top of that, because of these technical problems, lots of players lost silver and in some cases even the offer they got from the trading caravan. 
Let me explain more on this so you can better understand what we are talking about here. You see, any bundle can be shuffled for free three times a day if you didn't like what you got. After that, you can still shuffle the offers as many times you like, at a cost of 75,000 credits for each shuffle. The problem with this was the fact that when you tried to shuffle, either for free or with credits, the event page randomly crashed, displaying a message that the event was temporarily unavailable and they are trying hard to fix it for you. Very hard. You'd say okay. Guess I'll have to wait for them to fix it. No problemo. I got time. But time is all you have actually, because now you're poorer with 75,000 credits or with a free shuffle burned in the flames of eternity. You see, every time you shuffled the offer and the event crashed, it didn't just simply crash on you. It took with it your silver or your free shuffle slot, sometimes even your bundle that just dropped. Think of it like this. Maybe you got a really nice offer that you can't refuse and want to get it. You press purchase and bingo, this event is temporarily unavailable. By the time the event page starts to work again for you, the offer is gone. If you're lucky, the silver, gold or bonds are still in your account. If not, then you are poorer than before with the amount of silver, gold or bonds you just spent on the non-existing offer. Also, we'd like to point out that this behavior was observed by other YouTubers as well, even warning players not to spend their resources on things that do not exist. From our point of view, this is extremely serious. You can't play with people's money and resources any way you want or desire. We find it equally serious that Wargaming did not warn players of these technical problems in any way, and they kept them under the rug so no one knew what was really going on in reality. As I was telling you, the community was the only source of info on these problems. To this day, they have not acknowledged these issues and how they will proceed, as a company, to refund the silver, gold or bonds to the players that lost the resources because of wargaming clumsiness. Which is a very serious problem, again. We sincerely invite you to follow the forum pages of the event on the game portal and see for yourselves that people got screwed up big time with this event. Also, we need to point out again that Wargaming had done almost nothing to inform players that the event is broken and they should wait until it will get fixed. The only pieces of information we managed to find was on the internet, on the event main page, where they posted a banner stating some unexpected technical issues have occurred. Nothing more, nothing less. No mentions were made by them that players should not use the trading caravan until it gets fixed because they could lose their precious resources. And that's a big no-no from our point of view. Oh no, God! No, God, please, no! 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 They have an entire arsenal at their disposal to inform players of potential problems with the game, but they have chosen not to use them, as we are already accustomed to. They could, for example, have sent an in-game notification alerting players that the event is experiencing technical issues. They chose not to do that. For the sake of bitterness, I will show you how to do it in the future, when such problems inevitably occur. You see, it's that simple. We are sure that it is not too difficult to implement such warnings in the game directly. I mean, it took us only two minutes to do it for you. They could have posted a banner on the game's main website informing players of these issues. They chose not to do that, but to hide this aspect in the article describing the event. Seriously now, who comes back to reread an article that was posted days ago? Not a lot of players for sure. They could have informed their game moderators about these issues so that they could better guide the players. They didn't do that either. Or they could have just stopped the event when they realized it wasn't working properly. Again, they chose not to do that. 
But we'll stop here for the moment because otherwise, we could continue with the list of recommendations indefinitely. And they don't pay attention to them anyway. So what's the point? We just want to say this and we will put an end to this subject. It's like these people live in a cave, really. A dark and damp cave. And with that, I'm done. Seriously? My doctor advised me not to get so upset over such little things because it isn't good for my health, so I'll follow his advice I guess. He's a doctor after all. I only have one more mention to do. As you can see, this event has broken the game so badly that we can't even exit the caravan's page. We can't go back to our garage or do anything else. Guess the good old method Alt F4 will have to do in this case. Now, the next thing we want to talk about in this review is the goodies that can drop from the caravan. And in all honesty, there are many beautiful and nice goodies that can drop from it. If you have the silver to keep pressing that shuffle button, of course. And as long as the event page doesn't crash. So, for the next section of the review, we will show you what 34 million in silver can drop you from the trading caravan. We personally believe that's a lot of silver to spend just in a couple of days in this game, but we also believe that sacrifices must be made for the good of all. So you can better understand what this event is all about. Please note the next section of the review will be speeded up, for obvious reasons, and we will not count the drops from the caravan this time as we don't see the point. You will understand why in a minute or two. So, take a cup of tea, or anything else that you have at your disposal to relax and enjoy watching us burn 34 million in silver on this event.
As you can see, the caravan dropped us some really nice things for our silver, but also a lot of garbage and tons of duplicated offers. We don't really mind seeing a duplicated drop here and there, but this caravan thing is insane in this regard. It dropped us so many duplicated offers that some of our staff here at the office completely abandoned this journey along the way. So, I guess it's only you, our lovely viewers, and me now. Well, can't do anything about that, unfortunately. I honestly tried to bribe them with some wine and beer, just so I can have some company while burning tons of silver, but I failed. Just as this event failed miserably. Anyway. You saw with your own eyes what we received after burning approximately 34 million in silver shuffling the caravan a couple of hundred times. You can already draw your own conclusions based on them I guess, but we will tell you our personal opinion on this as well. As usual. In all honesty and unfortunately, this caravan thing is nothing more than a wheeled casino, so to speak. A wheeled casino that doesn't even work properly. It broke down so many times on the way here that we were surprised that it even reached its final destination, to our garage that is. Whoever built this piece of garbage caravan should quit his job and find something else to do. He clearly does not have the ability to do something good for the game or the community. In fact, this event managed to infuriate the community so much that even Wargaming began to worry at some point about the extremely negative feedback coming from the players. The forums and in-game general chat quickly became spaces for players to express their dissatisfaction and anger, with moderators being caught in this growing scandal surrounding the event. And guess what the moderators did? They quit their posts, as expected from them I guess. You may think I'm exaggerating or being unfair to Wargaming, but I assure you that's not the case. This time they did it with their own hands, again. They frack it up big time and the community reacted to that, which is normal and what a community of players should do in such situations. Basically, what Wargaming managed to do with this event was to frack their most loyal player base, the old long-time players who invested time and money into this game over the years. They also managed to frack the newcomers as well, isn't that wonderful? The new players are the most vulnerable class of players in this case, as they are struggling to make some silver so they can spend it on tanks and other in-game goods. Such things as ammo, and consumables. You know, the stuff you need to enter a battle and enjoy the game. But no. Wargaming don't want their players to really enjoy this game. They want your silver, your gold, your time and sometimes even your soul. They take everything from you and give almost nothing in return. Apart from unfulfilled promises and a total indifference towards the players. We've said it countless times before and we'll say it again with every occasion. This game needs major leadership reforms as a matter of urgency, new people need to be brought in who are willing to listen and truly understand the community. People who know what to do and how to deal with situations like this. But unfortunately, I don't see that happening too soon. I think they've gotten so used to frack their players on every occasion they have that making any internal changes would not be profitable for them. And I also think we will stop here on this extremely sensitive subject. We don't want to anger daddy wargaming after all. And I don't want to age prematurely. I'm still young and beautiful and I'm planning to keep it that way for as long as I can. Now, considering everything that happened and went wrong with this event, we can only conclude one thing. We believe this event was created especially just so players can burn the silver they earned during the winter holidays event when they had the opportunity to earn more silver from the boost they got for reaching level 10 atmosphere. In a way, you can say that they gave us something nice and then decided to take it away from us. Nice of them, but not really. Also, many players bought large boxes during that period, 
which led to some accumulation of gold that players may have wanted to keep in the bank for various occasions. Such as the trading caravan event. At first glance, this event was the perfect opportunity to empty your safe of silver and gold. Unfortunately, this was not the case here. So, let's make a quick summary together and find out why did this caravan thing failed miserably. First of all, the fact that the trading caravan event didn't work properly at launch, and even after three days it was still crashing on players randomly, taking into the abyss your silver and gold. In fact, until the end of the event, the caravan section in the game continued to manifest crashes. So practically these problems were never solved at all. Please also note that by day 3 Wargaming removed the banner placed on top of the internet page of the event warning players they are facing technical problems with the caravan. Why they did that, we don't really know, because the event was still crashing like hell for us. We will deduct one point for this majestic failure on Wargaming side and another one for trying to hide the fact that the event was still a beautiful engineering mess. So, two points down the drain for now. The second aspect is that there was no complete list of goods in stock and their exact quantity. It was basically a kind of Russian roulette if you understand what I mean. And I'm sure a lot of you have figured out what I mean. As long as you don't know exactly what this caravan contains, why would you want to burn your silver to shuffle? Maybe out of sheer curiosity, or out of sheer ignorance. The idea is that they threw us in front of this roulette wheel and told us to burn silver on it in the hope that we would get something nice. But they never told us what nice things we could get out of it actually. At some point, they updated the article on their website and included a list of goods that were already out of stock, but this was after a bunch of people threw left and right with silver and gold on things that actually did not exist anymore. On top of that, they still stubbornly refused to list the caravan's stock. So, another point is going down the drain. The third aspect. Why did they force us to spend silver in order to attend this event? Since each offer already had a cost in silver, gold or bonds, we don't see the point in spending 75,000 silver to shuffle for a new offer. The answer is simple and I explained to you a little earlier why. Because they really wanted to dry us up. That's the truth, nothing more, nothing less. Due to this absurd requirement to shuffle for a new offer, there goes another point, unfortunately. See, is that simple to lose points at your own game, you greedy little devils. Just like we lost our silver at your caravan game. And by the time we finish with this review, more points will go into the abyss. We're not done yet. You can be sure of that. The fourth aspect. Lack of communication from wargaming with the community. When things started to go downhill, they hid behind screens and under desks, avoiding any concrete contact with the community. There has been no official communication within the game that the event had technical issues that they are trying to resolve and players should not waste silver, gold or bonds for the time being. If you wanted to know what the hell was going on, you had to dig through their forums or other external sources. In addition, their official responses have been so vague and evasive that it makes us wonder what the hell is going on in their offices. It's like this company is run by monkeys, not people who founded a studio in 1998. Yeah, you heard right. The company has 23 years of experience in the gaming industry. We can't figure out how it is possible for a company with such a history to fail so badly, honestly. And not once, but many times over the years. For this, we will deduct two points because we believe communication is the key to success. If you lock yourself in your cave and pretend you can't hear the echoes of the crowd outside, then you've failed miserably in your relationship with the community. The same community that buys your overpriced crap and supports your business by doing it. 
Also, we'd like to point out another thing that at least for us seems a little strange. As you can see, the general chat window in the game is malfunctioning. Actually, every day of the event we could observe this anomaly. There were times when it worked and others when it didn't. We can't tell if this was done on purpose, due to the avalanche of players who expressed their dissatisfaction in various ways, more or less civilized, or simply the caravan event completely crashed the servers, generating more problems within the game. In any case, this anomaly has caused even more communication problems between wargaming and players. Basically, you couldn't contact a moderator inside the game or find out what the hell was going on with the event. You no longer had access to the only way available within the game to communicate with other players who were experiencing similar difficulties. This seems at least suspicious to us, but seeing the multitude of technical problems facing the event, we would not be surprised if this anomaly was also triggered by the caravan. So we won't deduct more points on this, for now. We are aware that such problems can happen at any time, but we cannot simply ignore this anomaly in our honest review. Whether it was intentional or not, we will never know. And now, the last thing we want to talk about is the players. You see, the players of this wonderful game are a little tired of the deceptive tactics experienced on them. And rightly so. We are already somewhat accustomed to being deceived and ignored but don't take us for fools. We are not idiots, we see exactly through your smokescreen what your intentions really are. You don't have to treat us like we are some milking cows. With every nonsense you do, you lose your credibility and your player base. And this aspect has been noticeable for some years now. The most recent event where we could really see how much the player base has shrunk was the holidays when you could barely see 125,000 or 150,000 players on European servers. In past years, the winter holidays gathered more than 250,000 players on the servers. If this is not a good enough indication that something is wrong, then you are blind and ignorant. It's that simple. For this, we will be deducting another two points. Yes, two points, you heard it right. Because we don't like to be fooled and milked by anyone, as you probably wouldn't like it either. So why do it? Well, I guess because you have to make your money so you can buy that luxurious limousine and that super expensive yacht, maybe even a new villa. We don't think you have enough of them already, so you need to milk the players more on every occasion you got. And that is exactly what we have seen with this failed caravan event. It was just a new tool for wargaming to make more money, nothing less, nothing more. A new tool wrapped nicely and presented to the players as the perfect opportunity to get some nice things in return for their silver, gold or bonds. But don't be fooled so easily, dear players. This event is nothing more special than other previously launched events where we were encouraged to throw money out the window. The difference this time is that they've moved on to the next level, so to speak. You see, they didn't ask us to buy boxes or other things from the premium store this time. At least not directly. They made the players spend the resources they had already accumulated in the game, hoping to get something good in the end. And please don't get me wrong, we perfectly agree that some offers were well worth it, but unfortunately too few and in too little quantity. To truly understand their objective, we must look beyond what they claim this event to be. Our honest opinion, as always, is that this event is just another game of chance, packaged and presented in a different form. A new form that misleads players. It's true that they didn't ask us to buy items from the premium store so we can enjoy this event. Almost nothing. But in fact, things are different. And I'll explain to you why. First of all, they forced us to spend our silver to take part in this event, as I said before. And when you receive a good offer, it is usually for a sum of gold, bonds or silver. Usually, the best deals were for gold or bonds. 
After a few shuffles, you may have finally gotten a good deal that you never dreamed of. But it's for gold. If you're lucky, you may have the gold in the bank. If not, then you are in a position to decide whether to buy that gold from the premium store so that you can then buy the in-game offer. In a way, Wargaming wins twice in this game of chance. First, you spend your silver to get the offer then you spend real money to get the gold you need from the premium shop. Secondly, after buying the gold you needed from the premium shop you may find that your offer is no longer available because the stock is gone or the event page is manifesting problems. So you can't buy the offer, but you spend real money to buy gold from the premium store. Isn't it beautiful? Therefore, unfortunately, we will mark this event as others in the past. Pay to gamble, more precisely. But this time you have to gamble twice. First with your silver, then with your wallet. An absolutely miserable thing from our point of view. A miserable thing that will drop another point from the final verdict. But we're not done yet. We have one last thing to do here. And it is an extremely important thing. You see, you may have wondered why we publish our reviews one or two weeks after the launch of a game or event. The answer is simple. Because we want to give them a chance to reply and see if any action is taken to correct the problems. If there are any problems of course. In this case, unfortunately, there are problems. Lots of problems. The reaction from Wargaming when the first signs appeared that the event was broken left much to be desired. But let us not open this subject again. We've already discussed this. What we want to talk about are the actions they took to compensate players who lost silver or other resources during this splendid event. And to our surprise, they seem to have acted to try to correct this. At least partially, but at the same time in vain. The damage has already been done. Although there is absolutely nothing specified or announced on their website, it seems that the players were able to claim back some amounts of silver spent on the first day of the event. Please note that for only the first day of the caravan event. Nothing more, nothing less. And nothing has been said about recovering other lost resources, such as gold or bonds. Moreover, this information regarding the silver refund was distributed by the community of players on various platforms. Wargaming has not publicly mentioned anything about this to date. Although we tried to find official information from them, we could not identify anything concrete. There is a simple message posted on the player support page about the availability of offers. But that's all, nothing more. Another aspect is that in order to be able to benefit from the silver refund, it is necessary to contact the support team and ask them to do it, in the hope that your request will be taken into account, of course. Note that nothing is guaranteed in this regard. If you are lucky, you may get some of the silver back. If not, then your silver was lost somewhere in the abyss and nothing can be done about it. From our point of view, this is again a miserable tactic that Wargaming applies in relation to the player base. Since nothing was officially announced about the silver refund, how could any player find out about this and the procedure they need to follow? This information is probably deliberately kept under wraps to avoid reimbursing huge amounts of silver lost by players. You see, they are willing to refund some of the silver, but not officially. Only for a small number of players who contact the support team in this regard. And since no one knows about it, you can be sure that only a small part of the players will benefit from this. Normally, an official announcement should have been posted on their website announcing to the players about the possibility of benefiting from this refund and guiding them on how to do it. Or rather, they should have reimbursed the silver of all players automatically for the first day of the event, without making players go through the support procedure. We believe this is the right approach that Wargaming should have taken in this trading caravan mess they made. 
Therefore, this will do nothing but drop another point from the final verdict of our honest review. That being said, after analyzing all these problems in connection with the trading caravan event, we have reached the point where we can give our final verdict. At first, when we started working on this review, we did not think it would be possible to reach this verdict ever, but unfortunately, it seems that we were sorely mistaken. As a result, our final verdict for this failed event is a zero. Yes, you heard me right. Zero? You may be surprised, but we were also surprised by this verdict, to be honest. We didn't think we would ever give a zero score for a game or event launched by Wargaming. But calculating all the points that have been deducted so far, we have reached zero. Basically, we got to the bottom of the bag, so to speak. In a way, it's a little ironic, isn't it? Wargaming took full advantage of us, draining us of all the resources we had, and we in turn drained them of every point we could give to this event. And please don't think that we did it on purpose, just to get revenge on them. It is the right verdict after the analysis we did together in this honest review. And as usual, we fully stand by it. This event has shown once again that Wargaming is not willing to listen to the community and improve its relationship with it. On the contrary, this event showed how much they use the community to make money from it. At any cost. This event proved to us once again that Wargaming is incapable of putting in place things that are good for the community, but also for them as a company. And this event managed to shatter any credibility they still had. Moreover, the community reacted correctly to this mockery, which I do not think Wargaming expected. It is the first time in the history of this game that the entire community has condemned the deceptive and evasive practices they use. And that says a lot and will certainly have negative repercussions, unfortunately. These repercussions include a declining player base, lost trust in the company and more. Such as the willingness of players to invest more money in this game. Which will, unfortunately, lead to the collapse of the game. A collapse that has been announced for a long time. And honestly, we don't want that to happen. We want this game to continue to succeed. We want the player base to grow. But all this will only be possible if Wargaming changes its current practices, practices that hurt the game, the community and them as a company. As closing notes, we would love to hear your opinions on this event but also on our final verdict for it. Do you think we were fair to them by giving a zero score to the trading caravan? If not, please tell us why. Unlike Wargaming, we read every comment and consider every recommendation made by our community gathered here on our YouTube channel. For us, the community is the most important thing we have. That being said, we'd like to thank you for following us and don't forget to click the like button if you enjoyed our honest review, or the dislike one if you didn't. Until next time we wish you success in everything you do and please take care of your wallets. Don't throw money out the window at a few pixels on a screen. This is our recommendation for you, as usual. Goodbye and see you next time, hopefully with better news.